The savory appetizer is cooked by Robert Holly at Brasserie La Coe's in Atlanta. It contains potato, tomato, and goat cheese topped with a tarragon sapillon. Seattle star Thierry Rotaro prepares a salmon entree. Pay attention to his impressive technique in butterflying the filet, then creating a loin-like roll. From Sanibel, Florida, Danny Melman does dessert. It's his greenhouse grills, mango, macadamia, and white chocolate brulee appropriately blowtorched before service. Robert Holly is executive chef at Brasserie Le Coe's in Atlanta. It's a sister property to the famed Le Bernardin in New York. In the 1997 Gourmet Magazine's Top Table Awards, they placed number four and number three respectively with the readers. Chef Holly's starter is a warm goat cheese potato cake. One element of the dish is a tomato compote, which is started by sweating chopped shallots and two peeled garlic cloves. Fresh diced tomato. A few branches of fresh thyme. Glaze with a red wine vinegar. The heat is reduced and the mixture is cooked very slowly. Yukon Gold potatoes are boiled, then cooled. Potato is peeled. and made into a medium dice. Okay, into this mixture, we're gonna add our fresh black olives, chopped. Parsley. Capers. Cherry vinegar. Sour cream and heavy cream are added also. Should be a very soft consistency. Now we'll take the tomato compote. Just a thin layer. And now we have some herb goat cheese. This we allow to warm in the oven. Three to four minutes at 350 degrees. Now for the sabayon, we're gonna put, take a little bit of uh, champagne vinegar. Just 
some dry white wine. Salt and pepper. The three egg yolks and seasoning are whisked over direct heat until they become a pale yellow. You could also use a double boiler. And you want to whip it up till the eggs are cooked, but not broken. It will top the potato cake. Chopped tarragon is added to the sabayon. And add a thin layer onto the top. Here at the restaurant, we use the torch and we'll lightly glaze. Assorted greens are garnish. We have a little red pepper coulis here. The greens can be tossed, and we'll add a tiny bit of sherry vinegar to that. A little more olive oil. Then we'll make our plate. I have the red pepper coulis. Make a little decoration. some sliced olive. Strips of red rose pepper. Can add a few capers. Just a few more drops of olive oil. was good to French chef Thierry Rotoro's Seattle restaurant, Rovers. The Zagat survey classified it in its best food category, and it was awarded first place for Seattle in the Gourmet Top Tables Reader's Poll. He offers Alaskan King Salmon Tournados with Puget Sound Sea Urchin Sauce. Today we're going to do what's called a Salmon Tournado, which is basically try to shape the salmon loin once boned out and skinned out shape it into a tuna dough. So first you need to have a nice fish, preferably under 15 pounds or 18 pounds. Once you have your sides, what you want to do is get rid of the uh, belly skin. Thank you. Then we're going to proceed to skin the salmon. Gently lift it up from the skin. Pin bones are removed. They're pretty hardy. A pair of tweezers 
or a pair of nose pliers will do if you can't get such an instrument. Only a portion of the fillet is used to form the tournados. Once all the pin bone have been taken out, what you want to do is butterfly the salmon. By giving it gently pressure with your blade, Then you want to flip it around and allow you to work on the back of the salmon to put all the meat perfectly inside. The next uh, process is just to roll the salmon as tight as possible, just like you would another loin of any kind. Make sure you do it gently to not tear out the meat. Following this, just take some string. Tie your string just like you would for a tournado, which means you put the string as far as you want the tournado size to be. You will be slicing each tournado in between each string. Therefore, you'll have the size. You can actually decide on the size of your tournado. You want to make it tight, double knotted, but be careful not to apply too much pressure in the meat because it would go inside the meat. Keep going all the way down the loin. Once all your pieces have been tied up on your loin, just cut the strings off. Keep the ends for a mousseline or a future um, project, then cut right in the middle of the string, in between the two strings. Next, we will start the dry vermouth sauce, which will be the base for the sea urchin sauce. In a saute pan, pour in your dry vermouth. And some chopped shallots. Once the pan is really hot, just sear in your salmon tunados. The salmon is seared in olive oil. Gently turn them upside down, color them on the other side, and then finish it in the oven. Three to four minutes at 375 degrees. Fish stock is added to the reduced vermouth mixture. It's reduced and butter is incorporated. It's strained, then blended with sea urchin roe. The seaweed mixture called wakame starts presentation. You should preheat your awashi yakame, or ocean salad, in the oven for about two minutes. Gives it a better flavor. Place the sea urchin, the uh, tornado of salmon, atop the ocean salad. And pour in around your sea urchin sauce. For decoration, we'll use a little bit coolie. Beautiful pansy.
as well as some calendula. At their popular greenhouse grill, owner chef Danny Melman and his wife Ariel celebrate American fusion with dishes like blackened yellowfin tuna, tasso, and seafood etouffee, and duck confit served with mango marmalade. His dessert this time is equally effective, white chocolate brulee. Egg yolks and sugar are combined to start the anglais. General proportions that we would use when we're making anglais would be six yolks and a cup of sugar. Anytime we use any kind of fruit, we cut back on the sugar to let the flavor of the fruit come through. We whisk in fresh pureed mango. Hot cream with a half split vanilla bean is tempered into this mixture. Bring our cream just up to a boil. And what you wanna do is you don't wanna, you wanna cook the eggs, but you wanna do it very slowly. So what you have to do is make a liaison by tempering you just want to stir the yolk, sugar, mango mixture, and slowly add a little bit by bit just to get the yolks started warming up and cooking. If you dump it in there all at once, you'll end up with scrambled eggs. And once you get it started in there, it's ready to go. Put it all in. Replace that right back to the heat. Pour the mixture back in. Then we stir it over the heat with a ladle. We start with a ladle because you don't want to add extra air. If you whisk it, it adds too much air into the mixture. And if you try and cook it right away, you get a real bubbly, holy type uh, creme brulee or custard, as opposed to having a nice, smooth, creamy texture put it right into some ice. You can transfer it if you'd like. As long as you have the opportunity to stir it a little, you don't have to worry. If you're not going to be able to stir it, you should transfer it into a clean, cold container and set that container in the ice bath. Now that the anglaise is cooled, we like to put a little bit of citrus zest in there. And since it's being heated again, you can see how it's changed in consist consistency once it cools. The brulee is assembled in small flans. Now what we do is we just rub the inside with a little bit of water. You can use butter, but sometimes it, the butter tends to break out. And you just want something that's going to sort of hold these macadamia nuts, which are ground up. They're not going to stick real well, but just so they hold on the bottom, which is about what you want, and it adds enough, enough texture. White chocolate chips. I would advise using a good chocolate because the, the, the better quality chocolates melt better and easier, and they don't break, the fats don't separate. We put about, I think it's, recipe is about a big tablespoon of white chocolate in there. Anglaise, make sure you don't have too much zest. And just fill your cups. The zest and the nuts add texture to this dish and flavor. So we probably have about a half an inch of water in here, and it's hot. Bake at 350 degrees. We set our flan in there, our brulee in there. Put it in the oven. As I said, that can take anywhere from 35 to 50 or 60 minutes, depending on the size, the thickness. The finished brulee is topped with a diced mango, red, and green pepper mixture. We have sugar here with a little bit of cinnamon, 
and ground cardamom in it. And you're not going to get that hard crust that you would get on the flat surface of the custard if you were to do it just directly on the custard, like I said. We do it with a good old hand torch. People love to see this in the restaurant. And what you want to do is melt the sugar and caramelize it. It takes a little bit longer because it's on the moist mango, but it'll still, it'll still brown up and get crunchy. It's presented with fruit and of all things, bread. Fresh berries. And we have toast a little bread. Just as something to dip in to the custard, as opposed to always using a spoon. It's always nice. We like to try and have some sort of edible utensils that we use. and just a variety of fruit sauces. And one thing we try, we do a lot with infused oils. We have a cinnamon and peppermint with a little annatto. And when that runs onto the toast, it's nice. You can roll your berries in that. And that's a very simple, extremely quick dessert.